There is a style of art online that's pretty popular and it's called WPAP or WPAP. And it basically involves straight lines and geometric shapes and they're filled with color. Here's an example of one on Etsy where if you look up a WPAP cat or dog, you're gonna get a custom pet portrait. It's a beautiful looking illustration. And what I love about it is it's visually arresting with the colors, but it's instantly recognizable because it's obviously somebody's pet. So you could pay somebody to make these sort of portraits. Here's another one, little kitty cat. Here's a pop art portrait. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can create your own WPAP portrait using completely free software. And I've also got some tips and tricks on how you can make your WPAP picture really stand out and look professional. Let's go. All right, I hope all is well. Let's talk a little WPAP today. And we're gonna be using Inkscape, which is a completely free vector software that you can use, you can download it, and it's ad-free, it's completely free, and it's actually quite easy to make these WPAPs, at least from a technical perspective. Now, I do wanna jump in and just mention two minutes of art overview before we jump into Inkscape. Here's a typical WPAP, and the, the deal with these WPAPs, the reason why they're popular is they're both visually arresting and they're easily recognizable. So here, for example, is Muhammad Ali, and Muhammad Ali in real life, world famous boxer, he doesn't have like a big red blotch on his forehead or on his neck, but the WPAP illustrations does have that. So what I would encourage you to do is really take a good hard look at a few WPAP photos that you like, like these illustrations that look good to you and figure out why. There's a couple of things that I'll just mention as far as tips go, but we can see this is a nice one. It's not too detailed. It's got nice big swatches on his forehead. His eyes are detailed and white. The teeth are visible and they're not some weird color like purple or something. So you wanna make sure the eyes, the nose and the mouth are generally recognizable. Here's another one, Robin Williams, world famous comedian. And you can see here, this is a little more detailed. There's a little more tiny little blotches here in his eyes and on his nose and on his mouth, but we can still recognize it's him. And on his cheeks and his forehead, there's large, big shapes. So you don't need to make it overly detailed. This is one that's probably not one of my favorites, but I did pick it because I wanted to show you this is art and this is subject to your decision as an artist. So when you're making these WPAP illustrations, you can make them more detailed than the previous two that we just saw, Ali and Robin Williams. This one is very detailed. You'll see there's not many large blocks. There's a lot of little blocks and the eyes are actually quite black, whereas the one before, the eyes actually have a lot of color on them. I'm Again, it's personal preference. You might look at this one and go, that's what I wanna make and that's great. Just be aware that in this one, it's more detailed and it is art and you may not necessarily want to have so many of these little tiny blocks all around the face and the nose and the mouth. Here's Jimmy Fallon, world famous talk show host. I like this one a lot because from a technical perspective, it's relatively easy to do. The teeth are white, there's some white on his face, the eyes are, there's white inside of his eyes, and this looks like Jimmy Fallon. It's easily recognizable. You'll notice at the farther away you get from the face, the less detail there is. So for example, his forehead has big blocks of color. His suit and tie has big blocks of color. So I'm gonna give you a couple of quick tips and then we're gonna jump into the Inkscape and talk about technically how to draw these. So here's some tips. Typically for the eyes, you want to have a dark color. Notice his eyes, although there's different colors in there, they're both dark. It could be a dark gray, a black, a dark brown, something along those lines. From a human brain recognition perspective, faces are mostly eyes, nose, and mouth. So if you can get those right, the rest of it's just details. You usually want to have about a 10 color maximum. You can see here on this one, although there's lots of different colors, just look at the greens, for example. You'll see there's green here, 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 here. 
it's kind of spaced out. Look at the whites. There's whites here, here, here. It's spaced out. Look at the pinks. Here, here, here. It's spaced out. You don't want to just have half the face green and half the face pink kind of thing. You want to have a 10 color maximum and then use that color palette wisely. The colors are typically pastels as well. They're not super bright neon colors. Now you may want to try that. You may want to say, hey, I really want to try a neon WPAP. Yeah, it's great. Go for it. But generally speaking, WPAP designs have some sort of a pastel sort of, you know, calming, you know, they're, they're visually arresting, but they're not like a black light poster, for example. Don't forget to use white as one of your color palettes. And you'll see here, eyes, teeth, shirt. Those are all white in real life. And this artist said, let's make them white in the WPAP poster too. So, you know, his teeth aren't green, for example, his eyes aren't bright pink. So just remember, you probably want to keep these white if you can, or at least as a baseline when you're starting out. And you don't want to get too detailed. This one to me is a nice mix of having some tiny spaces, like some tiny shapes, some large shapes, and it's it's a nice mix. The teeth, of course, are well-defined, but you don't have like just, you know, it's not like a mosaic, right? A mosaic would be like tiny little marbles making up an entire picture. This is nice big swaths. You want to make sure to vary that shape size. Have some big pic, uh, big shapes in there, big color swatches, really big here on the tie and the shirt, and then have some little ones as well. The variation makes it really pop, which is a really nice feature. Typically, you'll have the tiniest shapes around the eyes. See how his eyes have all these little tiny shapes? Especially the eyelids, that's a big one. Eyelids, eyebrows, the nose, especially under the nose. And then right around the mouth, tiny details around the mouth as well. And then look at his forehead. It's just one, two, three, four, five, maybe six shapes make up his entire forehead. So the tiniest shapes are around the face, the eyes, the nose, and the teeth. Okay, let's get in there and actually start drawing our WPAP picture. And if you've never heard of Inkscape before, then today's your lucky day. It's completely free. You just go to inkscape.org and you can just download this professional vector graphics editor. You can create SVG files, which is you know vectors, and we'll get into what a vector is here in just a minute, but you can just go to Inkscape and download. It's an awesome resource. Download it onto your laptop or your desktop computer, and let's get started. Okay, if you log into Inkscape for the first time and you open this application and you look at this screen, it can be a little bit intimidating. There's menus along the left-hand side. There's menus along the right-hand side. There's menus along the top, and it's like, whoa, where do I even begin? So I'm just going to take 30 seconds and just do a quick overview here on Inkscape. What we're going to be using today to do this WPAP is over on the left-hand side, and it's this Bezier curves and straight lines. It's this little pen tool on the left-hand side. When you click on that, there's going to be an option now to draw regular Bezier paths, spiral paths, B spline paths, or straight lines. Okay, and we're gonna be using sequence of straight line segments. If you've ever seen this Bezier before, it can be a little bit weird because you're like creating these weird curved lines. And a lot of people are kind of like freaked out by it and they're like, what do I do? And then you create this thing and you're like, ah, what do I do? So don't stress too much about the Bezier. Today we're just gonna be using the Bezier and we wanna go up to the top where it says straight lines, create a sequence of, sequence of straight line segments. That's what we wanna click on, okay? From there, now the pen will only draw straight lines. So when I click and I move, I can only move in a straight line. So then I click again, and now I can only move in a straight line. I click again, I can only move in a straight line. If I go back to the original, you'll see it's highlighted. When I click it, that creates a shape. In this case, I created a triangle. That's what we're gonna be doing when we create this WPAP. Now from here, because it's selected, I can just use my little color palette down at the bottom and I can make it any color I want. Pretty cool. Or I can say no color at all 
and that just leaves it as the little triangle here. I can also move the triangle around if I select it. There we go. And I can move it around as well. I can even stretch it. I can do all sorts of stuff with it. It becomes a vector. So you'll see these nodes. These are actually vectors. They're mathematical formulas that look at each other. So we're just going to be creating these shapes and just laying them over top of an existing photograph and then filling them in with color and removing what we call a stroke. I'm going to really scroll in on here. And to scroll in, I'm just going to hold down the mouse wheel and click the control key. So control and mouse scroll up. See there's a black line on the actual triangle. That black line is what we call a stroke. And we want to get rid of that stroke. Okay. And I'm going to get rid of that stroke very easily. Down on the bottom, it says fill red stroke black. I'm right down on the very, very bottom left. I'm going to click on that stroke where it says black. I'm going to click on it and a little stroke window comes up on the right hand side. And now I'm just going to remove the stroke. It says no paint, flat color, linear. I'm just going to click no paint. And now my stroke is gone. Now I can still move the shape around, but there's no black now inside that. It's just literally a red triangle. That's it. Now I can create another one. So I'll click the little pen button again and I'll click here, 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 and here. And now I'll fill that in with say blue. I'm just picking colors at random here. Now it's going to have the stroke on it, but I can remove that stroke by clicking the little stroke button down on the bottom left. And I can just click remove stroke. So now I've got a red and a blue. The blue now sits on top because I made it second. If you want to move it underneath, just select whatever item you want and just click page down. Then it just moves down a layer. So now it's behind. If I change my mind and I want the red now moved behind, I'll click page down and now that moves behind. If I change my mind and I want to move the red up, page up. That's it. That's how you create these shapes. We're going to create a million billion little shapes and that's going to be our WPAP. Okay, so let's actually start drawing a WPAP image. I'm going to go up to file and I'm going to import and that's going to import into my page. Now, if you want to change the page size, by the way, just go to file document properties and you'll get a little screen that pops up and you can make the page size anything you want. And as I click on any of these things, it just changes the size of it. So let's say you wanted to do like US legal eight and a half by 14. That's what I'll do. So I'm just going to click that. So I'm going to use eight and a half by 14 just as an example. Okay. Now I'm going to go file import. And here's my picture I'm going to use. It's Marilyn Monroe. It's a public domain photo. And I'm just going to move that into my page. So the question is how much of this face do we want to use and how much of the rest of the body do we want to use? And it's really just an artistic choice. I'm going to try to just do the face. So I'm going to actually just make this a bit bigger. I'm actually going to decrease the opacity of this as well. So there's an opacity meter on the bottom left hand side. I'm just going to lower the opacity down to about 50. And that way I can see the underlying page. It's like a see through now. And I will just make this picture sort of sit in the page. We're going to be tracing over it. So I don't really care about the background. I don't care about the curtains. But I do want her face and her hair in there and we'll use some of her body as well. So that looks good to me. Okay. So that's what we're going to be drawing now is this piece here. And I don't need to worry about the top. I'm just going to have just a white background. Okay. So there's a couple things we can do here before we start drawing that I think like they're recommended, but you don't have to do it. So because I've got my little arrow selected, I can actually move this picture around and I don't really want to do that. So I'll just go undo move. And I want to kind of lock this in place because I'm not actually going to be touching the picture. So down at the very bottom, I'm on layer one, the only layer I have, and I'm going to click this little lock button. Locks the layer. See how the little lock now forms? And now I can't move it. It's like a wallpaper which is great because I don't want to monkey around and move the picture when I'm halfway through drawing it. Now I'll go up to layer and I'll click add layer. 
This will be layer two, and I'm just gonna call this layer WPAP. And it's above current layer, and I'll click add. So now I'm in a new layer, I can just start moving around doing my stuff. So I'm gonna scroll in, and I'll just start with an eyebrow, for example. So I'm gonna click my little pen tool, Bezier pen tool, there we go. I'm gonna make sure it's not on curves, it's on straight, and I'm just gonna start drawing. Now what I'm looking for, and this is really important, what I'm looking for is contrast. And contrast is light versus dark. So you wanna go through and start clicking and I'm using the definitions in my mind of what's light and what's dark. So I'm only gonna highlight this eyebrow, for example. There it is, done. Now you have a choice to make. You can either put a color in there or you can just leave it as is. I like putting a color in there, just a gray, just to kind of tell me it's done. I'm not gonna worry about removing the stroke and I'm not gonna actually color it just yet. So I'm just gonna make this whole picture gray. It's gonna look really awful, but then I'm gonna recolor it afterwards. So right now I'm just making, clicking and just outlining shapes. That's all I'm going to do. I'll do this other eyebrow here. Done fill. We're good. Looks more like a scary Marilyn Monroe now. Now I'm going to go in here and do the uh, the eyes. So I'm going to click here, here. It's a judgment call too. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Fill that in. Then I'll click here. The nice thing is too, you can always change it, right? Now, let's say for example, I wanna come back to this one, but you'll see if I do that, there's gonna be a space above. So what I'm gonna do is just click in here just to kind of get there. So I'm just gonna scroll right in. I'm just gonna scroll, just clicking in here, and then I'm gonna come back around. So now it's covered, but when I cover it, you'll see it's over top. I'll just click page down now, so it's underneath. Okay, from there I'm now gonna, probably just should scroll right in. So now I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna start drawing around the eye. So it's nice because you can go underneath, right? So I can just do that and then I can just go right into here. I'll fill it and I'll click page down, page down again. So now that gives me two. So I'll start in here. So it is a bit tedious. Now, when you've got all of this covered and you're happy with the way that looks, then what you can do is you can just make a bigger shape underneath it, right? So you could say, okay, I'm done here. Let's say I wanna just do this. You could just make it to there, for example, cover it and then just go page down and that'll just move it underneath it. So I'll just select this one here and just go page down and just move it all the way down to the bottom. You won't go underneath the original layer, but now we've moved it down. Now it doesn't look great because we haven't colored it yet, but you can see now it's starting to make a shape. Now let's do like the foreheads, for example. We'll do something a little bit, a little bit easier. So from here, we can just pick sort of a random area in here where there's a bit of contrast and basically chunk off a large portion. Now it's gonna try, if you're out too far, it's gonna to try to link up to one of these. So you wanna like go in side the actual shape. Now I've gone in there and nobody will ever see that. So you can, you have room to play now when you've got your eyebrows done or whatever. Again, I'm just gonna fill this in and I'll do page down. 
So you can see now the eyebrow sits on top of it. Nobody knows that you've drawn the line in behind it, right? But when we color this with whatever color we choose, let's say we're going to color it, you'll see it, the eyebrow will still sit up, right? So you don't need to color. We don't need to worry about coloring right now. We'll just continue to draw. And just remember to do file save as because you'll want to save this as well just in case, you know, the cat jumps on your keyboard and destroys all your work. So you want to make sure as you get going, if you've been doing this for an hour, you want to make sure you save. Okay, so here I've got Marilyn Monroe W PAP is my Inkscape file. It's an Inkscape SGV, which is a vector, which is exactly what we want, and we'll click save. Okay, I've got my stencil all done and I've pretty much just gone through and made big shapes, little shapes. I think a really important piece for any WPAP is to make sure the eyes are relatively recognizable. Most humans look right at another person's eyes to recognize the person. So that's probably the most important thing I would suggest. So I've made my images black for the eyes over the eyes and then the eyebrows. I'm not going to monkey with those colors and then I've made the whites of the eyes actually white. Now if you're not if you if we go through the coloring process and you're not happy with the way something looks, you can always just select it and you can actually just move it around. So here I've got the black piece I've selected. You can also just I'll just undo it, edit undo if you move it by accident. You can also just select the actual item and you can move it down, up, that sort of thing. So it's, it becomes a vector. Remember, you're always working with these vectors and you can individually move a vector if you have to. It might be a bit tough to select it, but you can do it. So I'm just going to move this one down just a tiny bit, just like that. I'm actually going to move this up just a tiny bit and then I'm just going to make this a bit fatter. So again, I'm, I'm not necessarily just copying what's already there. I'm trying to make it look decent as well. So you would... When I scroll back out, I can see this eyeball. I'm not real happy with the way this looks. So I could make this a bit larger. Now I could either stretch it or I can just individually move the pieces here as I need to as well. So I could make it look like that, for example. And again, you could, you could take as much time as you want with any of those individual pieces. But just remember, you're dealing with individual nodes inside of the shapes. Okay, so let's talk now about actually coloring this. There's a huge color palette down at the bottom and you've got black and you've got all these other things. So it's really easy to color something. So I'll just show you that really quickly. You select using the little arrow button at the top left, any individual shape that we've made. So I'll just select this first one here at the top. To change the color of it, you simply just select any color down in the color palette. So I'll just pick something really bright here, just at random. It's not the color I'm gonna use, but just to show you. Underneath the color palette, on the lower left hand side, there's a fill and there's a stroke. The stroke is the piece around the shape. So that black outline, that's the stroke. So I'm gonna change that stroke. I'm gonna remove it. And I just need to click on the black stroke and this little stroke window will come up. And at the very top of the stroke window, I've got different options and I'm just gonna turn it off. It just says no paint. When I do that, now the stroke is completely gone. So I can change the color just by clicking the color palette and I can change the stroke by going in and changing the type of stroke that I'm using. Now I, I want no stroke, so that's what I'm selecting is no stroke. Now, if you're wondering about the actual colors to use, you're like, well, that's great. I know how to select a color, but what color do I select? Then what I would suggest is going into a website called Palaton. And Palaton is P-A-L-E-T-T-O-N.com. And there's these different options you can use right at the top here. So there's one color. So if you pick any color inside this little window, I'm just going to move this little ball around. You'll see on the right-hand side, it changes the color palettes. There's lights and darks, but they're all kind of related. Then you can select this little button here and it says three colors. So as I move this little ball around, maybe I'll settle on purple, it gives me adjacent colors and opposed colors. I can also do a tetrad, which is four colors, and it gives me different options. So I've got four little spheres here that now that I'm playing with and I can move these spheres around and it gives me contrasting and complementary colors. 
There's also freestyle four colors as well. I'm going to use this tetrad four colors just to find some sort of uh, palette that, that I think works for me from a pastel perspective. So I'm just going to settle on these just, you know, this is as good as anything. And I'm going to select any one of these little boxes and that's going to give me the actual hex number which I can use. So let's say I wanted to use this one here. I can see here it's DC9 3AF. That's the name of the color, DC9 3AF. So now I can just go in to Notepad. I'll just pop up Notepad and I'll just type that in. DC9 3AF. So that's my first color that I'm going to pick. And then I would just pick like seven more, eight more, nine more, and I would have all my colors sitting there. So now if I want to use that color in Inkscape, I've got this color selected. And then down at the bottom, see, I can change the color if I want, but I don't want to do that. Instead, I'm going to pick this little fill button here at the top, and I'm just going to punch in the color that I want right on the right hand side. And I can make it the exact color that I want. So that'll be the color. So you could go through and do that if you like. You could also just pick random colors and just see how it likes. It's really easy to pick as well. So that's an option. I'm just going to go through now and just color these a little bit. So I've just got everything as gray, just as an example here, because I didn't want to be distracted by the colors. But you would just go in and you would just select your palette color, or you would select it off of Notepad, or you could go into the little triangle and you could monkey around and see what looks good. So for example, I'm going to pick like that, for example. Maybe I'll pick a green here, actually. So I'm going to just change the little arrow. I'll pick a green. And then I'll just change the brightness of it here. Something like that. And then I'll remove the stroke by clicking the stroke button down at the bottom left. And I'll remove the stroke. And that's it. And then you just go through and you recolor all of the shapes, removing the stroke and just picking whatever color you think would look good. Quick little bonus tip, I did want to mention that if you're not in the mood to use Notepad and make a note of everything, I'm just going to pick this color over here and let's just pretend I made it a yellow, for example. Okay, I'll remove the stroke. So now that's the color I want to use, but maybe I want to also use it down here. So if I'm not, if, you know, instead of making notes in Notepad, another option you can do is just select the image. Instead of being in stroke, just go back to fill and then there's a little eyedropper tool here. And you can just pick the color right from the image. And then when I scroll down here, I can just pick that same color. So I can just go here and that gives me the same color. Then I can just remove the stroke here. So I can match up the image pretty easily. I'll do that one more time. Let's say I wanted to make this color here the same as this color over here. So what I'll do is I'll select this image. I'll pick the little eyedropper tool. And then now whatever image I select, it's going to change it. Now I had it on stroke, so I'm just going to remove the stroke. I'm going to select fill, eyedropper tool, select the image, and that changes it. So you want to make sure your stroke is turned off and you want to make sure that your image is colored somewhat consistently as you go through and paint all the different shapes. Okay, so I've got the last of the coloring done here. So this is my picture. Now, if you want to look at the underlying photo at any point, down at the bottom, there's a little layers tab and you can just select the WPAP layer, which is the current layer, and you can just select a little eyeball and that will just disappear and make everything disappear or reappear as needed. I want to point out too that when you're working on the image, you may want to use the image for reference, but you can always change the colors. So I'm certainly not saying that this is the final color palette that I would land on. I just colored everything in just to show you technically how you can do it. If you're not happy with the color palette and you'd like to change something. So let's say for example, I missed a couple pieces here like this here. I've, I'm not happy with the gray, let's say. So what I'll do is I'll change that. All you need to do is just go up here to stroke, remove the stroke, fill, and then pick the eyedropper tool and just pick any other pick, uh, color. So I'll pick like the pink, for example. And then here, the last of it, the stroke, I'll remove, fill, 
and then I'll pick maybe something that's not adjacent, right? So I'm just looking to see what am I not touching here. So this one here, for example. So I'll punch that in. Here's another little piece that I missed. Stroke, I'll remove, fill, and then I'll pick like blue, for example. So I'm just picking stuff at random, and then I'm looking through and just making sure I've removed all my strokes around my image. As you can see here, I've got a couple that this little black piece has come down, and this little piece here, I forgot to remove the stroke off of that. So you'd have to go through and just double check that you're removing the stroke on everything. I've got some overlapping designs here. So as I remove the stroke, there it is. So it was hiding in the background there. So you might just have to poke around a little bit to see if the stroke is going to disappear. So you can see, you know, probably if I'm being really self-critical of this, first thing I would remove is I, like I wouldn't look at the underlying photo because it's not supposed to be an exact photograph. It's supposed to be art. So this is the idea is that, you know, can we tell this is Marilyn Monroe? I would probably monkey around with the nose a little bit and I would maybe change this and maybe try to make it black, for example, just as an accent. Uh, you know, you may want to, you know, have a couple little smaller pieces in there. You can always change stuff, I guess, is my point, right? If you're not happy with the way it looks, you can always just pick a different color and you can just run with that as well, right? So I hope you found that helpful. You can spend hours having fun with the WPAP, but this was more of a technical walkthrough on how to actually make the baseline here. It's easy from here on out. If I didn't like this color, for example, I could simply click it. And then I could just click the little eyedropper and just pick any other palette color that I want. Maybe I wanted to use this gray color here, so I could just change that. Or if I wanted to make it bright pink, I'll just select the color pink. So you could make it anything you want. It's really easy to change once you get going on it. So I hope you found that helpful. And you know, this is a great opportunity now when you remove the underlying layer that you could use this now for a t-shirt, you know, that sort of thing. So I'm gonna go to layer one and I'm just gonna unlock it. And then I'm going to select layer one and I'm going to delete it. So now I've got my WPAP picture that I could now put another background in. I can save this as an SVG. I just go to file, save as, and it will come up now as Inkscape F SGV. That's a vector, which means I could make this on the side of a building. It's infinite resolution. You can see here as I scroll in, it's all individual colors. Oh, there's a couple other little pieces here. I got to remove stroke, remove, and stroke, remove. So it can be a little bit tedious here, but you know, I would recommend, you know, going through and just making sure, you know, cleaning up the image. That's a big piece of art that can be a little bit tedious at times, you know, going through and just removing images, like strokes around the images, that sort of thing. If you're using white, as your background, it can be a bit tough to see if you're using white in the actual image as well. So you can make the background a clear color, a transparent, and you just go into File, Document Properties, and then you'll get the Document Properties tab show up, showing up. Just down near the bottom, it says Background, Checkerboard Background. And I think that's helpful because now I can see this piece here, I would need to move it a tiny bit in, but I wouldn't notice that if the background was white. So there's my WPAP picture. I'm pretty happy with that. You know, I'll probably spend some time just cleaning up the nose a little bit, maybe adding a couple little accent, tiny little, uh, you know, shapes uh, just to maybe make it a bit more detailed if I want. Otherwise, it's good to go and I'll just use that on a t-shirt or a coffee mug. So I hope you found that helpful. As always, please feel free to like, subscribe, comment on the videos. Love to hear from you guys. Thank you so, so much.